Good morning, everybody. We are in Luke 13. If this is your first time here, you're like, wow, Bear knows Bible things. Welcome. Um, Bear doesn't know all the Bible things. He knows some of the Bible things, which is why I would encourage you right now to get your Bible out and read along. We're in Luke 13. And some were present at that time reporting to him, to Yeshua, about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their offerings. That's not cool. We know about blood. We don't have anything to do with blood. That is the life force. We don't play in blood. We don't drink blood. We don't say blood. We don't cook with blood. We don't mess with blood. We don't do blood. Um, and meaning that I guess we're going here because this is where the spirit has taken me. If you have blood guilt, um, thou shalt not kill. All the command is thou shalt not murder. I have a video called Father God Loves Soldiers. If you have blood guilt because you have killed in the line of duty, my question to you is, was it murder? Murder is a crime of the heart. And if the answer is no, I was doing my job, I was saving my buddies, I was protecting my country, I was doing what I was sworn to do, okay? You're not dead to that sin, that's not murder. That's killing. Killing is absolutely allowed in the Bible. Especially within the context of law, of war, rather. But that doesn't mean that there isn't blood guilt. Talk to your Messiah. Talk to your Creator. Ask them to lead you in that, to heal you in that. Don't do anything stupid. As somebody who is no stranger to the taste of a gun barrel. Don't do anything stupid. There's a difference between killing and murder. But blood guilt is real regardless. Okay? And if you need help, reach out. NTXMag at Gmail. November Tango X-Ray Mike Alpha Golf. We got you. Now, and Yeshua answering said to them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they have suffered like this? You think these people were especially grievous because of the way that they suffered? I say to you, no, but unless you repent, you shall all perish in the same way. What does repent mean? Hebrew word teshuva, to turn. Unless you turn from your evil and wicked ways, your lawlessness, you shall all suffer the same way. Or those 18 on whom the tower of Silo, Siloam, Shiloh, fell and killed them, do you think that they were greater offenders than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? Do you think that these 18 guys that got killed by this falling tower, they were especially terrible? Or do you think they were just as wicked as men in general? I said to you, no, but unless you repent, you shall all perish in the same way. What is repenting? guess we're going here too. Whoa. Thank you, wind. My dome just got really cold. Repent is the Hebrew word teshuva. It means to turn. <clears throat> Repenting of your sins. 1 John 3, 4, sin is lawlessness. Sin is doing the things you're not supposed to be doing. Repenting means to turn away from. So that means when we repent of our sins, it's not just espousing with our mouth. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Yah. I'm sorry, Yeshua. Uh, forgive me of my sins. You must acknowledge your sin. That's step one. Step two is you have to turn from it. Stop doing that thing. Whatever that thing is. Bear, it's hard. Boy, do I know it. I get it. That doesn't mean we don't stop. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, okay? Pray to Yah, scream at the sky, go for a run, do push-ups, do whatever you got to do, get it out. But don't give the enemy a foothold. And he spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it, and he found none. And he said to the gardener, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it even make the ground useless? 
this tree ain't good for nothing. Cut this thing down. And he answering said to him, Master, leave it this year too until I dig around it and throw manure. And if indeed it bears fruit, good. But if not so, you shall cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the congregations on the Sabbath. This little parable, this fig tree here. I'm sure there's myriad ecclesiastical interpretations of this phrase. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more nurturing and time to get something to bear fruit. You got to know when to cut it down and when to give it a little bit more time. And he, Yeshua, was teaching in one of the congregations on the Sabbath. And see, there was a woman having a weakening spirit for 18 years and was bent over and unable to straighten up at all. And Yeshua, seeing her, called her near and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your weakness. He healed her. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was straightened up and praised Elohim. Praise Yah. But the ruler of the congregation, responding much displeased that Yeshua had healed on the Sabbath, said to the crowd, There are six days on which men should work, so come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. Bro, good job. I know that woman was jacked up for 18 years, but it's the Sabbath, so uh, don't do that. Hypocrite. Then Yeshua, then the master answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not one, each one of you on the Sabbath loosen his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? And this one, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, look for 18 years, should she not be loosened from this bond on the Sabbath? He's like, hypocrites. Do you not go water your livestock on the Sabbath? Loose them from the stall, and I loose this woman from the, bind, the binding of Satan for 18 years, and you would raise your mouth to me? And when he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame. Amen. And all the crowd rejoiced for all the splendid works being done by him. Therefore, he said, what is the reign of Elohim like and to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and threw in his garden and it grew and became a large tree and the birds of the heavens nested in its branches. And again, he said, to what shall I compare the reign of Elohim? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. It only takes a little bit. It only takes a little bit to get started. Mustard seeds. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Eh, they're probably about the same size as a, a tobacco seed. You could fit mm, a thousand on my thumbnail. They're itty bitty. Itty bitty 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 bitty. You leave it long enough. Poof, massive that the birds of the heavens can park their butts in it overnight. Leaven. All it takes is a little bit. Three measures is six gallons. I'm lying. It's three gallons. Is that what he said? Yeah, three measures. Woman took and hid in three measures of flour. A little bit of yeast, a little bit of baking soda, a little bit of baking powder into three gallons of flour. And guess what? It leavened the whole bunch. It's all it takes is that spark. Start. Go get busy. And he, Yeshua, was going through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Master, are there few who are being saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. Because many, I said, you shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Master, Master, open for us. And he shall answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Then you shall begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he shall say, I say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. I'm going to camp there real quick for Ein Minuten. And if you're wondering why it's looking like I'm standing all crazy, it's because there's literally a tree stump directly next to my right foot. 
like directly. I actually have my right foot on a buttress root right now. Um, Cause hashtag, yeah, woods bro. Okay, righteousness. In this very same chapter, Luke, flip back a few pages. Luke chapter one, verse six. And they were both righteous. Who was both righteous? Zechariah and his wife, Elisheba. And they were both righteous before Elohim, blamelessly walking in all the commands and righteousnesses of Yahweh. So what is righteousness? Blamelessly walking in all the commands and righteousnesses of Yahweh. So Yeshua, but he shall say to you, I say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. Depart from me, all you people who are not blamelessly walking in the commands and righteousnesses of Yahweh. This is Messiah speaking. And again, I get a lot of flack for this. And again, I don't care because it's what the Bible says. It's what Yeshua says. And it's verses like this that woke me up out from my typical modern Christian, big C church, churchianity, bull crap, spiritual existence and slapped me in the face and made me go, oh, I'm completely wrong in the way that I'm walking out my faith. And I'm completely wrong because I'm doing what some polo wearing beta male motivational speaker set up on that stage, not what my Messiah said. And I simply started doing what my Messiah said. And that's how I got here. You know, and again, a lot of people, oh, you're in a cult. Well, cults have leaders and I haven't found one yet. So thanks, bro. Um, not that there isn't myriad issues with the Hebrew Roots Movement. Namely, some of them, some pastors, predicate your salvation entirely on the color of your skin. That's not only racist, it's completely extra biblical and I reject it outright. Because what is Israel? Israel's father, the father's chosen people. What does it mean? He who overcomes with L, not he who has a particular skin color. So, yes, yeah, we have those issues, just as the Mormons have issues with people who still think polygyny is good to go uh, with an 80-year-old man dating a 12-year-old girl for no other reason than it brings him carnal pleasure. That's disgusting. And yes, polygyny is biblical. Uh, and there are circumstances with which one could easily say, yep, and this is what we're going to do and this is why. But not in the way that the Mormons employ it. Um... Everybody has their issues. Is this a denomination? You be the judge. This is the way. What do I do? It's called the way. Acts 24, 14. Yo, Paul, what do you believe in? Yeah, Paul, the apostle Paul, rabbi Paul. I believe in the Torah, the prophets, and the resurrection, to paraphrase Paul. Me too, to paraphrase Bear. So... It's verses like this that woke me up to that. And I came to this conviction on my own. I thought for the first six months that I had this calling in my heart that I was the only one on the planet and I was losing my freaking mind. I was like, Father, how could you, why would you give me this revelation? Who do you think I am that you would give me this revelation? With all of my backstory, with all of my brokenness, in and out of churchianity, my apostasy, uh, my decade of open warfare against the Father, why would you give me this revelation? <clears throat> and then I realized that it wasn't just me. That it wasn't me and a handful of other people. That it was hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people that are awakening to the way, the way that Yeshua walked. If you love me, keep my commands. Straight out of the mouth of Messiah. And so, is that heretical? Certainly heretical against religion, but I don't care about religion. Religion's a bunch of man-made bullcrap. What I care about is serving my creator, walking with my Messiah. That's what I care about. The rest of that, bullshizer, not interested. 
But he shall say, I say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the reign of Elohim. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of heaven and yourselves thrown outside. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hmm, what did they do? Kept commands. Hmm. That's a workspace theology. That's what the Bible says, bro. It's not, and here's the thing, it's, you're not saved by your works. Your works are proof of your salvation. James, Jacob, Yeshua's brother. Be not just hearers of the word, but doers also. Faith without works is dead. You say you have faith, show me your works. I will show you my faith by my works. Now, that can be balanced against Messiah and his rebuke to the Pharisees. You tie the mint in the rue, you do the works, but you ignore the weightier matters of the Torah, the right ruling, and the love of Elohim. So it's not just the works. It's doing the works because of the love of Elohim that he has put there on our hearts and commanded us to do a law forever throughout your generations. I still have generations. Messiah himself, till heaven and earth passes away, not one jot, not one tittle, not the tiniest little mark shall pass away from the Torah till all be done. Oh, they're still here. I guess all has not been done yet. We still do these things. And lastly, in Revelation, Revelation 19, 11, easy to remember if you're a 45 ACP aficionado like me, Revelation 19, 11, when Yeshua comes back, he who is trustworthy and true sits upon the white horse clothed in a garment that is dipped in blood, judging the world based on righteousness, blamelessly walking in all the commands of Yah. Now there's days that I'm pretty blameless and there's days that I'm not even a little bit blameless. There's days that I am such a busted up POS that I can't even utter Yah's name. And there's other days that I am so filled up that it's just overflowing. I'm snatching people off the streets and ministering to them. I'm meeting people in public bathrooms going, what's your issue? Well, I'm, no, you got something going on. How did you know? Because y'all brought me here to pray with you. In a bathroom? Yeah, in a bathroom. Okay? So some days I'm really blameless. Not 100% blameless. No chance in hell of that. But other days, man, it's everything I got just to just to hold my head up. But that doesn't mean we don't try. It doesn't mean we don't try to do these things. And we abuse not the grace of Messiah. That's the beautiful push pull and that's the walk of walking with Messiah, keeping Yah's commands that refine your soul, that make you a better person. I watched videos of me a year ago and I'm like, I'm not even that guy, let alone the guy I was a decade ago. I'm not even the guy I was a couple months ago. Constant forward progress, constantly walking closer and closer and closer to the thing that I was fearfully and wonderfully created to be. Getting as close to that truth as possible through a daily commitment, a covenant, with my creator. So would we let all that fall by the wayside because some guy somewhere said something different? No, what did Messiah say? If you love me, keep my commands. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, for I never knew you. I for one don't wanna hear that at the end of an age. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and the south and sit down in the reign of Elohim and see there are last who shall be first, and there are first who shall be last. On the same day, there came to be a certain Pharisee saying to him, get out and go from here, for Herod wishes to kill you. So he actually got a tip off from the Pharisees, like, you need to go, bro. Uh, Herod's going to kill you. 
And he said to them, go, say to that fox, see, I cast out demons and perform healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. But I have to journey today and tomorrow and the day following because it is not fitting for a prophet to perish outside of Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem has a long history of killing prophets. Oh, here we go. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to her. How often I wish to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but you would not. See, your house is left to you laid waste, and truly I say to you, you shall by no means see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahweh, of Yahweh. And no, I'm not spitting at the name of Yahweh. I just had a lot of saliva in my mouth, so forgive me, Yah. You know the contents of my heart. Um... So you shoes like copy that. I got some stuff to do, and then I'll be out on the third day. Uh, but I'm certainly not going to let you kill me out of Jerusalem because there's a long track record of that, and uh, because of that long track record of Jerusalem destroying Yah's prophets, I say to you, you shall by no means see me until the time comes when you say, "Blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yah." Pretty quick teaching this morning in Luke 13. Reading, whatever you want to call it. And as always, I encourage you all to spend time in your word. Pray over your word. Talk to your creator. Um, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Put your nose in your Bible. I will fail you. All men fail. I am aware of the ramifications from a responsibility aspect that come from me reading my word with y'all each week. I honor that. I thank you for letting me into your life each week and I am aware that James, my brothers, let not many amongst you be teachers. Mm -hmm. Teachers are held to a higher level of accountability. And so whatever this relationship is between us, always acknowledging that I'm not Pastor Bear, I'm Brother Bear, whatever this relationship is, believe me, there's a diligence on my part to heed the Father's words. To obey his commands and to not say things willfully that are untrue and to stick to the script per se of what I find inside the bindings of this copy of the scriptures but all that being said I will fail you and I know this because I have had myriad pastors who have failed. I have had myriad bosses and leaders who have failed. And the reason for that is not a one of us is Yeshua. So when you crack this word open, look at what Yeshua tells you to do. Look at what Yah commands you to do. Start there, okay? Yah's word and Yeshua's word carries much more weight, infinitely more weight than the word of any man myself included. So it is absolutely my hope that when we do this, you are doing this with your Bible out so that you can read your word, so that the Father can speak to your heart. Don't take my word for it. Shalom, y'all.